that conversion stage is called chana. That jana conversion stage we should try to maintain that jana conversion stage power to power, power to power to power to power. Then you can proceed per jana, spin jana, per jana, four jana. Say something to them. I think for most people when they first they're doing meditation and this light appears, they're like, holy cow, what's that? And they get very fascinated by it. <clears throat> so it takes, it takes some understanding that the impulse to look at this meditative uh, anomaly, like, what is this magnificent thing? I've been meditating on my breath, it's a little bit boring, and then this light appears. And the thing is not to get too enamored with the first appearance of the light because you go there and it will fade. So it's, you have to kind of ignore it in the beginning, which is hard because it is so kind of fascinating. But to actually proceed deeper, you have to somewhat say, okay, there's a light. But and ignore it to the point where it, be, it becomes bright and stable. And then if you do pay attention to it, it won't, it won't fade. Mm -hmm. So the brighter it is, the stronger it is. Then, it's, then you can put your mind on it. So it's good to ignore it until it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And then when you switch over to it, um, it will be stable enough. You mean it's not like you do switch over to the peripheral light? Well, it's not peripheral, but light becomes oh. one. Oh, I see. With, so whether you pay attention to the light or to the breath, it's the same experience because they're really unified, but when they're distinct, uh, take note of the light, be encouraged by the light, but not be too enamored with it so you actually lose what's generating light is this. But when there's a point where they become the same, and then pay attention to the limita or to the breath, is identical. And at that point, you can actually tune into the color itself, and it goes, becomes stronger to do that than to stay with the concept. Yeah, I have, a concept, uh, I have a question about uh, the breath as concept. I'm still not quite grasping that, how to, how to be with that as a concept. Uh, so I'm curious if you could say a little more about that. And also, if, uh, if somebody's not able to quite grasp that the breath is a concept, do you recommend sticking with particular sensations? Or, or what would you recommend? Then you could say this that you do not see that in a reality, you say this is concept. Then you see him as a thing, this is concept. Then you see body as a body, you say this is concept. Why? If we pay attention for in this meditation, systematically, then you do not see as dimension only a group of particles. Then you develop this particles. They are only four kinds of the reality. These are ultimate reality. But the, although they are ultimate reality, they are not permanent ultimate reality. They are not permanent. Why? As soon as they pass, they pass away very, very quickly. So they are not permanent. And then they will not see things. But if you do not see this ultimate reality, you will see this is things. Then you say this is concept. In the same way, if you break it easy, yeah, if you do, as long as you do not see subatomic particles in your breath, then we can say this is concept of But if you see the particles, then if you can analyze these particles, then if you can get some kind of reality in the breath, then you can say you see ultimate reality. But this is not permanent ultimate reality because they are permanent. As long as they rest, they Pass the the press, body. Still, there is cause. What is the cause? Cause is here, mind. Mind generates this breath. God is our Buddha's teaching. Mind is the fundamental cause to rise this breath. If there is still mind, then the breath will be there. If there is no mind, then the breath will be stopped. So, when uh, when our event takes hmm? when one person dies, there is no breath because there is no consciousness. <clears throat> the, the breath is actually 
air that is entering the nose. That is the breath, right? It is. Now, is that air generated by the mind? Or is it air that we just happen to be breathing in? Either then is mind produced material. Who will be coming up from the USA? Outside. Outside is two types. Here, two types. Two types is one type is here. Every consciousness which has on heart is it produces mind produces material. Small body gas. It will enhance the small body gas. In this small body gas, it has a material.
breath out of it. And that's what you end up tuning into. But stay with the sensations until your mind can actually tune into a good connection to the concept. And then as you keep interpreting the sensations as breath, your mind can, can start emphasizing <coughs> that and resting in just like there's this constant process of air going in and out, air going in and out, this is breathing, this is breathing. And then you don't need the sensations so much. But you can just sink into this process of air going in and out. You tune into that, that's breath concept. And later on you can break that concept down to the actual materiality that's in the phenomena that's happening there. But you don't need that um, to develop jhana. You just need the, a good, stable, subtle concept to sink your mind into. That's the, it's hard to, you really have to practice for a while with sensations before you develop a, a good, firm thing to connect to. And it has to be firm or your mind will bond you. Try to hit a concept, it won't really be there. And because of that, your mind won't connect anything. And because of that, your thought will arrive and you'll wander off. Stay with the sensations and work on building this relationship that breath is what's happening. And that's, that overlay is what becomes the breath concept, the stable breath concept. And it takes you out of the elements into a mind concept. Where if you stay with sensations, you're stuck at the body door. And you can't go into jhana on a body door experience. You have to go on a mind door experience. And the breath concept is a mind door experience. Um, sensation concept, um, concept of breath. Breath, the air moving in and out, but breath is um, the exchange of oxygen in the blood. Um, breath then would be, uh, could be breathed into the Newton yoga sense, um, you breathe into your Tightness and or whatever you're feeling restriction. Uh, or healing or things like that. Um, uh, practice that I learned a few months ago was um, paying attention to the heart, the um, uh, belly as you breathe, um, for the concept of breath. Um, and I thought you explained when I heard you speak at uh, Southern Heaven in Berkeley that um, this was four elements. And I think that I just heard you say that this was four elements. Um, that's why I was confused. Did you want to practice an emergency? What do you know what I do say? Did you want to say this later? If you want to do it, this is the way you have to do it. Then this is the naughty pocket of your Anantana skin. This is, if you want to break this here, then four elements is suitable for you if you want to break this this way. Because Anantana skin is fixed on this area of no skin or abandoned. This is the area where you must practice Anantana skin. But if you really disappear, you can do that. You cannot take care of it. Because there are many, many teachers who practice and you can be taken out and take care of it. If you can practice here, they can see you in the time. They can concentrate on the area, they can take care of it. If you can practice here, they can take care of it. Or they can see you in the time. So if you want to practice more in it, it is also okay to stay. From this area, you can be stay in your design, you can be a whole body. And at that point, you can also be seen transparent body, like the media, like the other than the media. But that transparent body is very big. You need to concentrate on it. So you need to take it in China. So, When you reduce the point, you reduce the point, you reduce the point, 
sometimes when concentrating, not sometimes, a lot, often, uh, thoughts would come which would contain certain hindrances. Would you recommend investigating those hindrances or going back to concentration? Um, as a practice, uh, obviously, I get sidetracked, but I want to investigate some of the hindrances, embodied in those thoughts that are going back to concentration. So my question is, do you continue with investigation or just concentrate? Yes, concentration is yes. the Because if you don't know the thoughts, if you can catch the thoughts, then it will be interesting. Yes, concentration is the But if you do not know the same then it is stop the brain in your meditation. Then it is going to Suffering in all those things, in anger, pain, suffering in those things, suffering in anger, and then suffering in the mother's book, and then all page sickness, then this suffering we should be coming. But if you are going to this suffering, then you can think, you will not be that soft. To ask them to come this different types of suffering, it was in crying, in pain. All of these hindrances will be useless, and this will be sure and knowledge to the master. We know that we can get the different areas of this paper to keep their contact with the spirit. I have a question about the um, connection between the four elements that you laid out at the beginning and anapana. Are they two separate practices? Choose one? Yes. For the beginning, it says you may choose the animal. If you want to practice the animal, you should try out your four channels to this area. Out your four channels. I guess I'm not going to do a four channel. That should be so much. If you want to do the animal, out your four channels to this area. And then if you switch to four channels, you can do the animal. It is very easy. It is very easy if you have this four channels to this area. If I if I practice anapana first and then four elements, yes, yes, it is very easy. but both are for concentration. Yes, maybe four elements meditation is for two days of continuous meditation. This is for meditation. Maybe we can say this is also for insight. This is the beginning stage of insight. Uh -huh. What is insight? Insight is completely underneath the very idea, the very presentation of the human matter. This is called insight because what I'll see underneath the reality and mentality, if you do it first, that this is only just superficial. So to see underneath the reality, to see underneath the reality, how you should begin, you must be before any misinterpretation system. So if you see small body bears, then if you get this up, four elements in each small body bear. And then that will be the beginning stage of the person, as well as the last stage of Samarka meditation. This is the last stage of Samarka. Four elements in Samarka meditation. Let's take a quick one more question, we'll take a break. Um, when one or if one is practicing the four elements meditation, does one have an intention of where to start, or does one start with what comes up first? I mean, I think the last thing falling up with my son, I can feel love. So my intention is to follow love this. But in the pasta, then whatever characteristic or whatever element comes up next is what we will be present for. And as I'm understanding it, that's not the way that you suggested we do the four elements, but we start with one and continue with that until to what? We go on to the next. Maybe you may accept any prayer that is said, oh, maybe reference also you can say, if you reference is said to you. But only one area is not that. We should try to prove up your body. 
ground your attention from wandering because it gives you something to feel instead of thinking. But if your mind isn't wandering, not to bring your attention into your mouth with that contact. So it's one way of suppressing the wandering mind is to, is to press down your tongue against the roof of your mouth and give your mind something to sink into instead of wandering. But if you're not wandering, then uh, don't cause extra sensation here because it will be distracting. Yeah. I had a series of calls recently. This is really happening. Uh, and I've been able to breathe through my nostrils. Um, and during the uh, sitting uh, recently, I got very distracted by that. And I breathed through my mouth. Um, is there any specific problem with breathing through my mouth? And, and I thought, Meditation. And when your nose is stuck in the hole, and you have to breathe through your mouth, can you do anatomic? Can you feel the breath on your lips through breathing through your mouth, or should you? <laughs> 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 talking about uh, practice and he um, the way I understood it that before you do the practice you need to have a sense of joy and contentment in your life before you can do the practice you describe could you talk about that a little bit um, <clears throat> before doing the uh, to cultivate a deep sense of contentment and interest uh, to help the mind be content and happy in the present moment, rather than just sort of sitting down and using your willpower, cultivate uh, a sense of happiness, contentment, and, and interest first before using concentration so that the mind is happy and relaxed, as opposed to just using willpower or practicing when there's the mind is not very intense, or the mind is very heavy. Um, so maybe doing reflections to bring that contentment and happiness. Sometimes make a process of thinking. But this is, again, is not easy. 